Hello and welcome to another CLI Magic video, the first one in over a year, just over a year. I've had a, a baby since then and uh, have been quite busy, so making videos takes a little bit extra time. And I've also been kind of jinxed on these videos. Every time I try to make one, something goes wrong. So hopefully this time it'll work out. And what better time for it to work out than right after I post these really cool MIDI commands. So right now you're listening to the theme song from Doom 2. Uh, Doom 2 actually, its music was all in MIDI format. Uh, MIDI format, if you don't know, is a music format that was developed in 1983, 30 years ago. And it's basically a vector music format. So instead of sampling sound and playing it back exactly as you heard it, it tells the computer or the synthesizer how to play, like what notes to play. And then it's up to the synthesizer, computer software synthesizer to interpret that. Uh, so it's basically just a set of commands and it's worked really well as a file format and a uh, standard and has needed little revision over the years so it was one way to put something very potent into a tweet and also a great way to show how binary works so today I posted this command and being Halloween it's the theme song from the movie Halloween from 30 years ago, or 35 years ago or something. Anyways, uh, so you hear at the end how it actually sustains out and the notes don't actually cut off. This is because in order to fit this into 140 characters, I actually had to edit the file by hand and remove the note off events. So it only starts the notes and it doesn't finish them. Some of you may have thought that I... Uh, I actually used some kind of MIDI um, program, like a sequencer or something, to actually develop the uh, the tune and then just base 64 encoded it. The thing about doing that is that it creates a file that's too long. So I used this sequencer. <laughs> BVI, which is the binary file editor, and all these hex values. Now don't get scared. This is actually a lot easier than you think. And you'll notice that there's, you know, pretty easy to recognize patterns here, you know, where I, I do something over and over again. You can, the way uh, BVI works is that it has a column of addresses over here for where you are in the file to, so that you can do um, binary, you know, data math. So you can figure out how many bytes of data uh, are between like here and here and so on. And then you have the set of actual binary data and in hex uh, display format broken down into 8-bit bytes. So each one of these values is a byte long. And hexadecimal is from 0 to F and so two hexadecimal digits make a combination of 256 different values from 00 to FF. And then over here is the actual ASCII interpretation of this data over here. So if you've ever opened up like a uh, a file, a binary file in an editor and you see this, it's because it's interpreting the data into ASCII format. Actually, VI does a little bit more than that. It's actually uh, it's transforming some of the uh, special codes and making them so that they're um, you know you can see what it is. But all this other data is just kind of you know you have no idea what it is. You don't know how you how you generate it. You know how would I how would I generate a Y with a uh, uh, two dots over it, or how would I generate this this 80 character? I'm sure there's ways to do it in VI, but it's not very convenient. So that's where BVI comes in. And file formats, they start out with what are called magic bits, or magic bytes, I'm sorry. 
and they're usually the first two to six bytes of data in the file and oftentimes they're made up of the ASCII representation of what the file format means so this is kinda means MIDI track header um, and if you look at like a GIF or a JPEG file you'll see something that looks like GIF or JPEG at the front and that those are called the magic bytes and that's how a program like uh, the file program you know when I run file it actually says it knows what it is it's MIDI data and it's it's figuring that out by actually looking at the header and then you know once it knows exactly what type of file it is then it loads up some other information about it and um, so I'm going to break this down you have the you have the MIDI header data and then you have the note data and then you have the ending so I'm going to break down actually a simpler piece here about a month ago I posted this one and that was that's a theme song from the uh, log commercial on Ren and Stimpy from about 20 years ago I thought maybe some of you would recognize it but I didn't hear anything, any feedback from anybody. I thought everybody would say, "Log, it's log." Uh, you can look that up online. There's on YouTube. They have a, they have the log commercial from Ren and Stimpy. Um, so if if I look at this one, and then I, over here I've actually broken it down so that you can see what everything does. So the first thing you have is the MIDI chunk header. And by the way, I, I didn't actually, you know, I, I, I just learned the MIDI file format recently. I decided to go out and just figure it out. And there's actually quite a number of pages online that explain how it works. Uh, and it's a pretty simple file format. It was a lot better to do this than to try to fit like a, a GIF or a JPEG or something into a tweet because you would need quite a bit more data to make something that has some meaning to it. Um, so. so it explains how the header chunk works, the track chunks, and then the different commands that you can have. And I'll just go through it here. So at first you have the MIDI uh, header chunk, and that just is the header of the MIDI file itself. It always starts out like this, with this file identifier, and then you have a type of MIDI file, and there's three different types. This one is uh, multiple tracks synchronous. And then you have the number of tracks. And so this is just, you know, you could have up to quite a number of tracks, I guess. Uh, this one only has one track in it. And then a, uh, a value for how many ticks, and this is time ticks, and we get into that later there are to each quarter note so in this one I put right I changed it so this this breakdown is actually a little bit different but anyways the meaning is the same so uh, the ticks per quarter note and then you have a track chunk and so a track chunk would be like a stanza of music um, you know the measures of music that make up one single track so one instrument basically and so that starts out with a short header and then the byte length of the track and you have to calculate this by using these addresses or looking at the address down here and then doing some uh, subtraction I'm sorry here the hex address um, to figure out the length and then uh, a tempo event and this is how many microseconds does a quarter note get so you have to do a little bit of math to figure out like for instance a tempo of 120 beats per minute in 4-4 four -four time would be 500 microseconds so that would have a hex value of 07A120 so you basically would take 500,000 and figure out the hex value and you can you can do this by um, using the BC program so I give it an input base of 10 base 10 and an output base of base 16 
and then I pass that into BC and it gives me the value. It leaves off the leading zero so you have to remember to add that in. Uh, basically zero pad it. And then you have a set of notes. So each node event has an on event and an off event, although I found that you don't have to actually have the off event. That's how I was able to do the Halloween, the first bar of the Halloween theme um, within 140 characters. So the node on event, basically you give it a delta time ticks, and so this one starts exactly at zero, at the zero, um, right at the beginning of the, of the measure. And then you have note on, and this is divided into, uh, basically you can divide a byte into two sides, and this is called two nibbles. Uh, you have the, f you know, the first four bits and the second four bits. So the first four bits um, control the type of command event that you're sending to it. So a nine means uh, note on. And then the zero, the second nibble, refers to the MIDI channel number. So a MIDI channel, can ha you can have up to 16 MIDI channels in a score. And so this can be from zero to F. And you would have different channels so that you could have different instruments simultaneously and so on. And then you have the actual note. And so this is a, hex this is a uh, hexadecimal binary value between... Uh, 0 and 7F which is uh, between 0 and 127 in decimal and then you have a velocity or the loudness of the sound uh, at the end and this is all that's needed to make a, a note sound just these four bytes you'll find that binary formats are very compact very tight and they don't waste any space I mean even within the byte you're not wasting any space there's every little bit has a meaning to it which is really cool you know it's not like when you look at HTML or something like that and there's so much wasted space um, you can fit a great deal of information into just 40 bytes of data in binary or 80 80 bytes of data um, it's really you know I could make this shorter if I could make the track header shorter but it needs to have you know this has to be kind of long to be able to distinguish itself from other file types um, and then you have a note off event and I basically have set this up so that each um, an eighth note lasts for eight ticks and so that's you know so eight ticks or one eighth note after I start the note I shut it off and you have to give it the exact same note value and velocity value. The note values, uh, you can, like on this page, they have them down at the bottom. You can uh, convert these decimal values into hex values. There's a few pages that actually just show you directly the hex value. So these are the octaves and then the actual notes in each octave. So you just figure it out that way. It's kind of neat. And because um, music is has 12 semitones per, per, uh, per octave, you know it goes up by 12 for every every octave so you can kind of do the math in your head if you you know you want to transpose something or uh, move it up and down an octave it's it's convenient in that way and that's that and uh, so you can do quite a few different things now that you understand the format you know it's it's really not that that tricky and um, So, you know, I have the Halloween. And then, just to show you how this doesn't actually have the ending, the uh, note closing. So here I have a, a note on, you know, a note on event. And, okay, I'm sorry. In this one, I, I, I have the actual closing. But in this output... Oh wait, okay, I already have that file. So here it is um, without the note offs. And this right here actually sets the, uh, the patch number. So C0 means change the, uh, the instrument for track zero to zero, which is piano. But that can be a value in between zero and 127 or zero and seven F and hex. 
And uh, so you see I have note on, followed by, well, I thought I, okay. No, okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading this too quickly. So this is note on, and then an eighth note later, another note on and then an eighth note later, another note on. And so I basically just keep turning notes on, and that's how it ends up sounding the way it does. Where it doesn't actually close off the notes, and they play on for a while. I think there's a default timeout uh, that Timidity has. Timidity is, is, a pro is basically a software synthesizer. You can do quite a bit with it. And it's a lot more tolerant of the files that I've edited. If you tried to load some of these MIDI files into like a, a standard um, MIDI sequencer, the MIDI sequencer might not load it, might crash or have problems because I don't exactly follow the standard precisely. There's, you know, there's a few places where I've, I've fudged it up a little bit. For instance, um, I don't always get the length, the byte length of the tracks correct like here where is it here like you know this might not be the right uh, four zero might not be the right uh, length of the track so and that's that's why you know timidity is saying too short of a of a midi file and um yeah so you can do fun things like make little scripts that actually play random MIDI files. So this, there's only three different actual notes in this first measure. So it basically just sends a little roll. These uh, ones, you know, one zero zero one zero zero one zero two zero, one, and then so on, and uh, and then it plays those notes. And in this one, I actually close off the notes properly. And for every measure that plays, it actually changes the patch number to a different instrument. So when I play this out, and I can pipe this directly into Timidity, which is really cool, it'll change the instrument. I probably should have set this to Michael Oldfield's Tubular Bells. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so, um, and then you can make other things like, you know, a random MIDI generator that just plays random, uh, a random note for each instrument. <laughs> the applause at the end. The applause is a sound that's usually at the top of the bank, so it's funny that that plays at the end. It's like finishing a 20th century composition. <laughs> or you can do this. So you'll notice here I've actually catted in a MIDI header and then merged it in with this uh, sequence of playing up the scale. Uh, and then closed off the track. So it's kind of neat. You can do lots of different things. I've thought about actually um, interpreting log data or uh, you know file names or something and turning it into music and maybe I'll save that for another time. So I hope you enjoyed this and inspired you to work with binary data a bit more. You know, but working with binary can really separate you from other people as far as your skills because a lot of people are afraid to work with it. But it is so important and it can be so useful. Um, it'll kind of open up your world to the different possibilities of what you can do with computers. Okay, until next time. <laughs>